everyone and welcome to Season 3, Episode 4 of From Hope to Glory at Truro City with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So, we are at the back end of December in our third season. The last month or so has been pretty good. We did go out of one cup competition, got through in another one though, and the league form, whilst inconsistent, actually puts us still in a really positive position, sitting in seventh place. So, all in all, not too bad. Today, we play Dover, who got promoted with us last season so let's see how we get on today Welcome back to Truro City, everyone. Things are going very well. We do sit in seventh position in the league, in the Vanarama National League, and today's opponent are down in 13th in Dover. So hopefully that's a good opportunity for us to continue uh, to pick up some points that are very valuable to us as we move on. You can see so far that we are doing pretty well in terms of our, um, our uh, statistics for this season, should I say. We've got the third best record in goal scoring. Sixth uh, worst record, which isn't, you know, great with 24 goals conceded. I think that's where we're losing a little bit of ground. But actually, that's not a terrible uh, amount of goals, really, for sort of 15, 16 games in this division for a new team. I think that's all right. But we do need to figure out how to secure that a little bit better. And I still say it's probably in our fullback area that's letting us down. Uh, yellow cards aren't uh, the worst, so that's fine. Uh, red cards, we've only got one. That's OK. <clears throat> the average rating... Uh, not average rating, what am I talking about? Average attendance might be third worst in the division, which I kind of also expected, but it's a huge step up from where we have been earlier in this series. So overall, that's not too bad. And um, on the other side of how the players are performing, Charlie Ball is getting a load of goals, which is fantastic. 14 goals so far this season. Callum Doyle, one of the other uh, signings from the summer, 7.35 highest average rating of the team. We've got a couple of guys on seven assists, which is positive. Andrew Neal, when he plays instead of Charlie Ball, has got the best pass completion. All in all, it's all pretty positive, really. Sitting just inside those playoff positions is well beyond our expectation at this point in the season. Can we stay there as we transition into January and a new year very soon? I hope so, but there's no guarantees of that. As you can see, December was a little bit of a mixed month. We lost twice, but one of them was the FA Cup first round game against Swindon, unfortunately. But it was only on penalties and we were so unlucky. If we go into the game and have a look at the, um, the, the way it panned out for us, you can see that we got an early goal with Andrew Neal, which is fantastic. And it wasn't until the 91st minute that they got an equaliser to send us into extra time. They then, uh, early on in the second period of extra time, got a goal to go 2-1 up, and we pinned them back uh, with another goal ourselves from Salam. And then we got to a penalty shootout, and Salam and McKenna missed theirs, and we never looked like regaining that, and the goalkeeper never got close to any of the, uh, the spot kicks from Swindon. And ultimately, we went out. But we went out. In, in as good a fashion as we could, I think. We gave them a real good go, and they are a, a division above us. So, all in all, I wasn't too disappointed with that. Before that game, you can see that we had a couple of decent wins, one of them in the FA Trophy, and we've since played another game in the FA Trophy as well against Northwood and got through that as well. So, we're now in mid-January playing Hornchurch in the fourth round of the FA Trophy. That is a competition that this season we were would quite like to do something in if possible so we'll put all our eggs in that basket when it comes round and see if we can get to the latter stages of it but in and around that from sort of Yeovil onwards remember Yeovil did us in last season in one of the cup competitions so we were trying to get some uh, uh, revenge on that and we went away from home and played them got a one all draw which isn't terrible we still have to play them at home later in the season and that's the game really where we want to beat them if we can and then the last three games have been a little bit inconsistent. Uh, we had a 1-1 draw against Maidenhead and only got the 1-1 draw through a penalty from Charlie Ball. In the next game, we played Scunthorpe and they're one of the big wigs in, this, in the division there. 
you know, touted to finish like third or something, and they were really hard to play against. We we did get a 4-2 loss in that game. One of our goals was an own goal, so it was a little bit, um, maybe our two goals were a little bit more than maybe we should have got, really. Um, but you can see that that remains inconsistent because in that game we let in four and in the following game against Dagenham and Redbridge we scored four and we didn't concede and it was a good way to bounce back from that little run of league form that wasn't the best. Um, but a good 4-0 win, Salam getting a double, Sam Knowles and um, Stavru getting on the score sheet as well meant a good win for us and that leads us into Dover for today. Home game against a, a promoted side also at the same time that we were so a team that maybe we should be looking to get the three points from and continue to hopefully turn this little inconsistent run into a better run leading into January can we do that let's find out today So as we look at the setup for today's match, as you can see, nothing has changed in terms of how we're going to approach the game. The personnel has changed a little bit, but not a lot. We have been rotating a fair amount recently, just trying to keep everybody fit and healthy where we can um, and getting some game time for some of the sort of periphery players, which is good. Um, and two uh, major bits of change in terms of what we're doing today for today's game are that both um, Harvey and Neil come out of the side and that's for a couple of reasons one the two of them haven't been the most consistent in the last few games Harvey specifically the last three games has been a little bit below par so we're just giving a little bit of a chance to one of our youngsters that we bought in in the summer Lewis Watts who I think is a decent player and will um, potentially take this position long term I think as we move forward um, so he comes in today just to get a little bit more game time under his belt and the other one that's changed is that we've taken Neil out again he has been okay here and there he got a 7.2 and a 7.4 in the last five games but also a 6.4 and a 6.8 with no goals and stuff and just at the moment I'm wondering whether Charlie Ball obviously is doing very well so he remains in our starting lineup and although his form is inconsistent as well he's been getting the goals which is positive but it's this guy that I want to put on the bench today, Horsewood. Thomas Horsewood. He's 20 years old. He's been here for since last season and is a decent enough player. He's got a very, very high finishing rating, good determination. And I feel like he's been a little bit lost this season. Um, and at 20 years old, it's worth playing him a little bit here and there and seeing if we can develop him potentially. Because I don't think Andrew Neil is going to last too much longer in terms of the, the current standard that we're looking for. So maybe this guy is worth putting in occasionally. So he's on the bench today just to see if we can get him some game time here and there and boost his confidence a little bit. Other than that, though, pretty much everything else remains the same. It's just those two that have changed today. So that means that it's Roberts in goal. Morgan at right back, Roundsfell comes in at left back, sorry that's another change, Kazoo and Doyle in central defence, Early, Mundell and Watts in central midfield, Knowles on the right, Salam on the left and Ball up top and a bench of Stavru, Jones, Silla, uh, Duke McKenna and Horsewood. The other change was Roundsfell there at left back just because again those full back positions I think is where we're causing ourselves some problems and Roundsfell hasn't played as much this season so again it's an opportunity to give him a go against a Dover side who I think ultimately we should be winning. Seventh place for us, 13th place for them. Can we get the points? Let's get into today's game and find out. So on this occasion, I've pumped the fists and I've suggested to the players, let's give the performance that everyone's expecting of us here. Put the pressure on a little bit. This is a home game and we should be winning this one. That's the intention for today. There, there are a lot of games this season where we don't quite know how we match up. But last season, we won the league and Dover finished below us, even though both of us were promoted. So ultimately, that should uh, give us a good sound, uh, a sounding board to be able to beat them today, potentially, and prove why we're also doing better than them this season in the Vanarama National League. So let's see how we get on. But first half hour has flown by with no highlights whatsoever. Very 
very, very dull game. A few chances created, but nothing highlight worthy until now. A long goal kick for Dover, well met by Doyle, but only back into the defensive area for Dover. And they uh, set themselves going again through the centre of the pitch. Uh, they drop it back again to Grayson in central defence. He sends it out wide right. Um, and we're uh, Roundsfell out there and gets a good challenge in Roundsfell. Um, up to ball, headed on brilliantly for Watts, who takes over. Drifting out to the left-hand side, cuts into the box, and there's a penalty kick. A brilliant, brilliant run by uh, Watts down the left-hand side to get into the box. Now, can we convert it? Charlie Ball on the spot kick, and that's a brilliant finish. And after a recent penalty shootout loss, that's important that we get uh, when we get the penalties now, we start to take them a little bit and get our confidence up on them. Um, Ball makes absolutely no mistake, even though the goalkeeper goes the right way, almost gets there, but he makes that bottom corner and we go one up uh, about 38 minutes, I think it was. Um, and after a fairly dreary first half, it means that we go into half time with a valuable lead. If we look at the statistics for the first half a little bit, possession we were a bit low on, um, a 1.20 uh, XG rating compared to a 0 0.3 for Dover. So that shows what um, the chances have been like for both sides. Four shots on goal for each, one on target for us and two for them. So it hasn't been a particularly good game. And I think we need to put a bit of a rocket up them at half time, even though we're one up, just to make sure that we maintain the discipline of our performance in the second half. So which one are we going to do? I think we're going to go and point the finger um, and we'll say uh, we've played well but there is still room for lots of improvement and again put the onus on them to actually go out there and do something uh, that's a bit more uh, significant than what we've done so far. Roundsfell with a throw in down the left hand side a perfect opportunity Watts into Salam who finds himself more central and then a very weak ball in but it's very poorly cleared by Dover straight into our defensive unit and we get to rebuild again it's gone up to ball and dropped it back into midfield everybody's working towards the penalty box lots of support and it's in for Knowles and he puts it wide of the post, very narrowly wide of the post, but wide nonetheless, which is so disappointing after a very good build-up, really. Dover down the left-hand side, a few more highlights coming now, and they've managed to find a, a, a crossing position. They get the cross in, the header drifts narrowly wide, which is a good thing, because the goalkeeper either was so certain or he just didn't move. Rounds fell with a, a throw in, but it's partially cleared back to him. He gets an opportunity to drift inside, which is what he uh, tends to do, playing the inverted fullback role. Salam on the ball, drops it back to Mundell. Uh, again, Rounds fell getting involved. And I think this is something that we've been missing a little bit. Richards, um, I think, has been playing in the left back role recently. And we'll talk about that again in a second because Knowles has just put a thunderbolt in from the uh, edge of the penalty box and put us 2-0 up. And it was a good passing move in midfield. Roundsville getting involved a lot. Early drops it into Watts, off to Knowles, and then gets out from his feet and catches everyone by surprise, including me, by taking that shot on quite early. Puts it right in the corner. And we go 2-0 up. But yeah, Roundsfeld drifting inside on that inverted wing-back roll as Knowles gets injured. And you can see Watts is also struggling as well. So we have to make a couple of changes. Maybe that's something that we've been a little bit slack on because Roundsfeld started the season injured, I think, and didn't get a first-team berth. Richards did okay at left-back. But obviously that inverted roll really helps in terms of how we set the team up. Anyway... Excuse me if I'm a little bit bunged up today. I don't really know why I am, but um, I'm struggling to breathe a little bit. But hope that doesn't impact you too badly. So let's change a couple of things here because of the injuries that we've got. So Knowles comes out and we put Duke McKenna on. Now he's more of a left-sided player, but he can play the right side. So we'll just leave him playing that role. What's will probably have to come out, unfortunately, having picked up a knock, a lower leg as well. So he will come out. We'll bring Mosilla in and we'll switch him with Mundell and just put Mundell into 
into the slightly more advanced role. So that will be okay. And what are we at? 62 minutes. I think we're going to leave it there for now and make a slightly later change with the third substitute as well, just in case we pick up, pick up another knock or um, any form of yellow cards, etc. But now we've got a little bit of breathing space. Uh, 66 minutes in, 2 0 up. Dover on the ball. So far, we've been defensively quite solid. And that again is the case. Down in that right fullback position on that occasion, we blocked it. Early came away with the ball uh, and it went right the way up to Duke McKenna on the right hand side. A little bit of a wayward shot, though. Some of our shooting in the area hasn't been great. We'll analyse that later because I do think that's been the case today, that we've got some good positions, but sometimes they're slightly wide. And rather than waiting for other team members to be in better positions, we're taking snapshots a little bit. And that's not quite how I want us to be. But anyway, that's, you know, par for the course sometimes. Uh, what last change can we make here? I think we might change that. Oh, it's difficult to know, really. I think we will take Roundsfell off. He's played reasonably well. He'll continue to keep that spot. But just at the moment, I want to protect that yellow card that he's got. And we'll just switch Morgan over to the left-hand side, who plays that role slightly better than Jones does, both probably being more, um, definitely being more right-sided players. Uh, five minutes to go, though. 2-0 up, quite comfortable, I think. If they get a goal here, and we've given them a penalty to try, for goodness sake, with three minutes to go, can Roberts finally save a penalty, having missed uh, the opportunity in the shootout? And he doesn't. And it's 2-1. And all of a sudden, the 2-0 that we had is disappearing with three or four minutes left, plus a little bit of injury time. Now we've got to be on our metal a little bit to absolutely keep this result as it currently is. And there's a corner to Dover. I can feel it coming. Oh, no. <laughs> you could feel feel it coming couldn't you all of a sudden everything turned on a sixpence and they had a couple of opportunities really late in the game and they've taken them so for the last couple of minutes we're going to change a few bits I've gone very attacking and we're just going to switch into uh, which one are we going to go to the 442 formation and I'm just going to make sure that I've got everybody where I want them to be defense is right uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, Duke McKenzie and I'm going to put him up front and I'm going to play Mundell out on the wide right. It's not his preferred position, but I think it's a better way round to do it just for the last few minutes. And we're going to go back in and press play on that. We're going to um, skip past the Dover replay of their attempt at goal. And then we're going to see whether we can get one highlight, please. And we don't. And we have thrown it away. Definitely thrown it away. In that last five minutes, wasn't it? We were doing really well, drifting along for a good result at 2-0. And suddenly they turned the screw and we couldn't quite cope with it for whatever reason. We'd been performing really well defensively up until that point. And then all of a sudden they get a couple of chances. Their tails are up from that penalty, which was a stupid penalty to give away. And then you just knew as soon as they got a second highlight really quickly on that corner kick, you knew that we were in trouble. And it went to that far post eventually. And he just powered it into the back of the net. And we go from a 2-0 win to a 2-2 draw in the last few minutes of the game. The last two minutes of the game. Humph. I'm a bit cross about that, to be honest. We did pretty well up to that point and then messed it up. So now we have the task to dust ourselves off and learn something from this particular madness that we just witnessed. I'm so deflated from it. It's ridiculous. It's only one game in the middle of a season that's going really well, but it felt like a real kick in the teeth, to be honest. Anyway, let's figure this out. And it's really, really obvious. It's not going to uh, be a long analysis session. The simple reality is we had 10 shots at goal and they had eight. Not bad. We had two shots on target 
and they had five and that is where we lost the game we saw a couple of occasions where a couple of our wide players specifically got into the box in slightly wide areas and rather than looking to lay it off blasted it wide of the goal and were not putting it on target enough to make the goalkeeper work the possession was all right passing completion was all right xg was decent enough for the two goals that we scored and then you just see the on target stuff so let's go and check that out if we go into the data itself we won't look at too much else i mean we had a good spread of shots plenty in the box some from outside but it's these ones here all of these four shots were off target and a couple from outside the box as well and it really really let us down in the end if we go and have a look at the shots themselves so there were four goals scored we'll just look at our own so one from outside the box and one from the penalty spot off target these are the ones and you can see that you get into sort of this sort of area from Lewis Watts and especially down this right hand side one from Duke McKenna and two from Sam Knowles who get into good shooting positions and then they put it wide or over the top instead of finding another player that could potentially slot the ball home a couple of long shots from outside the box uh, probably a header from Kazoo off a corner or something and that went wide as well not good enough a couple of block shots as well but it's exactly that's where we lost the game today it was our off sh off target shooting and that's so disappointing we we dominated a lot of the game in terms of the actual passages of play um, and we just couldn't find a way to make it count i'm not going to look at anything else i'm going to look at uh, let's look at set pieces today because it felt like that that was another opportunity that we didn't make much out of from today's game so this is always going to look like this we're doing the long throw from here and a lot of them don't pay off and occasionally one of them does so I'm not so worried that there were a lot of them but to be honest when you get into this point this sort of area you hope that one drops for you and it didn't quite work out for today unfortunately attacking free kicks we had a couple that got into the box and one that was played short so nothing particularly to write home about in that and then the defensive free kicks clearing the lines which were okay but it didn't lead to much for us and we only had one corner and I suspect it's that there that was the kazoo uh, attempt at goal that went now really wide it's just not good enough it was really uninspired and this is the problem when you're playing i think at um, pretty much any level but you're a, a mid-table side let's call ourselves at the moment because i think that's roughly where we are but when you're a mid-table side the game has got to find a way to make you inconsistent enough somehow and i think that's how it's done it on this particular occasion um, even against a side where potentially we should win the, the the potential is that we should not be dominating this league and I think sometimes that's the way it does it a little bit and it uh, it becomes a little bit frustrating if all you're seeing is that your players that got uh, scored bucket loads of goals in recent weeks and still got two today which is fine couldn't quite find the net at least the goal to have a shot at and that's really really annoying of course it happens in real terms of course it does for every every side but just at the moment i found that a little bit frustrating that we were on a decent run of scoring we got a couple of goals which is fine but we had some really good opportunities and messed it up and then dover got that penalty which was just ridiculous does that count as a mistake that's the other thing i wanted to have a look at it doesn't even count as a mistake which i think is a mistake in itself because how can that not be in that right fallback area they got an attack at our, um, our penalty area and we brought them down really late in the game and gave them a little bit of a light of hope and they put it away and then immediately got that second and i'm tearing my hair out over that one again we got a point it's fine in the big scheme of things in terms of where we are currently in the league but we don't want to lose ground through silly mistakes if we can help it and today just felt like one of those slight silly moments where we should have seen the game out 
I'm sure I probably should have gone defensive or something, but that would have just invited them on. I'm not even sure that's the way to go half the time. Anyway, stop thinking about that. We got the uh, the two two draw. We got the one point. It wasn't what we wanted. We'll call we'll call it unlucky for the the uh, players just to keep their confidence levels up a little bit, and then we'll move on and we'll try and figure out what to do next episode. So back in the schedule page, just figuring out for next episode, and it will be the game against Halifax as we continue to work each of the uh, uh, last game of the month, as it were, as our game to play. So it'll be Halifax that we come back for at home, which is a good thing. Lots of home games uh, in a row in the most part of January, which is positive. Hopefully that gives us a good platform to get some form properly back again. Um, a couple of other things, though, just as mentioned before we leave today, is that we got a couple of injuries, didn't we, in the game. Watts picked up a little bit of a knock and is out for a couple of weeks which is unfortunate but the worst one is Sam Knowles on that right side of midfield and he's out to four to seven weeks so we're going to have to work our squad a little bit there McKenna will come in and play on that right hand side as he did last season for us so we've got a decent enough replacement um, but yeah just a few injury issues but maybe just maybe a transfer deal that I might just be able to uh, finish that by the time next episode comes around, maybe we've solved our right fallback position. Hmm. I'll leave that as a bit of a cliffhanger. You'll have to come back next episode and see who we've managed to get in. But if it works out, I think we've got a decent one. Anyway, that's going to do it today. Halifax next episode. Disappointing 2-2 draw in the end for today. But we still keep marching on in 7th place in the Vanarama National League. So ultimately, in the big picture scheme of things, things are going very, very well still. That's going to do it though. Thank you for joining me today. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Join my United City community, the more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That helps me get seen by lots of other people. Check out the links below to Twitter and Discord and Patreon and the like. And support my channel through those. Until next time though, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.